Hi everyone, welcome back to another video review. I'm Delilah aka Asasina-san and today we are reviewing Maneater. Alright, I know this game was released in 2020. I played it in 2021. It came out for free on PS Plus. Thank you PlayStation for putting it on there. I had a lot of fun. Maneater is a game where you could just turn your brain off and have mindless fun. Put on a podcast, multitask while you're playing it you'll be fine and you'll have a great time. So story-wise, it has a plot similar to The Last of Us Part Two, except way less sophisticated, uh, but you're not really playing this game for the story, you're playing this game for the gameplay. It's a revenge story, I'll leave it at that as to avoid spoilers because this is a spoiler-free review. So you're playing as a bull shark and the whole purpose of the game is to literally swim and eat humans and other aquatic creatures. That's it. Along the way you collect items like a license plate or you discover like a ruins and an environment and things like that. There's things to collect, there's things to do, but essentially you're just swimming and eating stuff, which is kind of fun. A little cathartic. It controls pretty smooth. It feels like a swimming mechanic in other games that have those controls. You know, using the left thumbstick and right thumbstick to control the camera and the movement no issues there whatsoever. Maneater is basically a hack and slash game for sharks. You bite, you lunge, you evade, you tail whip, all kinds of cool things that you can bite and mash your way to success. There are obviously enemies in the game that that won't be effective against, but they're few and far in between. And you can pretty much over level yourself to overcome that, I think, except against maybe one of the apex predators, which I'll get into later. And like a shark, you can emerge above water with your fins sticking out and hum the Jaws song if you want to, but I'm not gonna hum it because I don't want to get a DMCA strike. The Jaws theme is one of the most iconic scores in media, so I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. But either way, this game will make you feel like Jaws, and I love that. One thing that's maybe not like a shark is you can jump out of water and eat humans while they're soaking up some sun on the beach for quite a while and as you level up you're able to stay above water without suffocating even longer. It was pretty funny seeing a shark flopping along land eating a bunch of humans, especially with the humans screaming in the background like <laughs> So I'm talking about how you can level up your breathing so that you don't suffocate above water. Uh, this is a RPG and you definitely progress not only in terms of abilities, but also just your shark. It starts as a pup, a little baby shark. Do, 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 do. And then you upgrade to a teen and then you upgrade to an adult and an elder and then a mega shark. And each time you see your shark get bigger and bigger and bigger, which is super duper cool. And it has Metroidvania like elements because you'll be in the first area of the game like the bayou and you won't be able to open certain gates or to fight certain enemies enemies until you level up and get stronger. Certain gates can only be opened when you're an adult or an elder. Other enemies can only be attacked when you're level 8 or 9. I mean, you could attack them, but they'll probably kill you. So you'll definitely have to go back to the first areas of the game to do some cleanup for collectibles and also to fight certain enemies that you couldn't take on initially. And you're just a little pup. I spent a big chunk in the beginning of the game just dodging alligators that were way above my level. And then when I finally got revenge on them, it felt so, so good. The upgrade system has a good amount of depth. There's three different armor skin called mutagens that you unlock as you progress. For example, you have the bone set, which has improved effectiveness against humans and boats. For some reason you can eat boats as a shark. I don't know if they really do that though. Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to know. It's also really good to increase ram damage when you lunge at an enemy and it also increases your damage resistance. The bioelectric set, which was probably the one I used mostly throughout the game, is super effective against aquatic creatures because it electrocutes nearby uh, aquatic creatures next to you, and it also stuns predators so that you open up for a nice thrash attack, which is where you just bite them and just keep gnawing at them over and over again. It's pretty brutal, I love it. And then the shadow set came in handy towards endgame when I was just kind of cleaning up collectibles for the platinum because you move super fast uh, with that armor set and it also releases poison damage. All of the mutations look very different. They all look very cool and they all fed to unique gameplay styles, but you can mix and match them if you wanted to, or you can switch in between them as long as you're changing things up in a grotto. So the mutations are tied to specific organs like the teeth, the fin, the tail. You can have like bone teeth, a bioelectric tail, a shadow 
weapon or something. And you'll also have different organs that give you perks. For instance, advanced sonar will help you see different items in the area more further out and for a longer time if you upgrade it. Party increases your health. There's different upgrades like mineral digestion that'll improve the amount of materials that you get from fighting an enemy because each fish, each human, each predator, they all have different materials that are tied to them that you use to upgrade your shark. There's also amphibious that allows you to stay above water without suffocating for a lot longer time and other upgrades that simply improve your defense and attack. You can change these upgrades all the time. Unfortunately, you can't do it on the fly, which I would have preferred. You do need to go to a grotto, which is like a little hub area in each of the locations of the map that you can upgrade and kind of chill out. Other than that, I do think that this game may have been a little better if you can change it out on the fly, but it's very easy to just fast travel to a grotto, so it wasn't really that much of a gripe. So Man Eater has that Ubisoft style gameplay where you're kind of just going from checkpoint to checkpoint, putting down waypoints, picking up this collectible, going over here to do that thing. There's really not much to this game outside of eating marine creatures and humans and picking up collectibles. So that can become redundant and feel really stale after a while, and it did, which is why it was very helpful to listen to a podcast while I played this game. But the game is so contained that it doesn't feel like it's overstaying its welcome for too long you can literally platinum this game in less than 10 hours probably beat it in eight hours it's such a mindless game that if you're listening to a stream or you're half asleep or you're listening to a podcast or maybe even watching a show on on the side on another screen you'll be able to still effectively get through this game what kept me engaged long term is two things one is when you eat enough humans there's like this gta style gameplay that comes kind of like when you kill enough npcs in gta all the police come after you and you get different stars there's that exact same function in man eater with eating humans where eventually hunters will come after you which have like snipers and divers that can come underwater and attack you and just stronger humans period the more humans you kill the higher your infamy level raises the more hunters you kill the higher it raises and at each infamy level up until infamy level 10 you have a different boss so you'll fight a total of 10 human bosses like Bobby Bojangles. <laughs> and the only way you can get rid of this infamy, just like in GTA, is you have to run away, hide out, not kill any more humans. So I thought that was a, a cool little function taken out of a game that's really popular. And it worked really well. Like the humans, once I reached infamy level 8, 9, and 10, actually became harder and harder. Like I had to use a lot more strategy uh, than infamy level 1, 2, and 3, where I could just bite, 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 bite. So there is definitely a skill level increase as you go which will help by upgrading your shark and also by kind of using your evade and attack more methodically. And killing the humans was probably one of the funner parts because of how they yell. It's just so comical. But the my absolute favorite part about this game, like my number number one, is the apex predators. In each area, as you clear out the different objectives, which is like kill 10 catfish, kill 10 alligators, whatever, whatever, kind of redundant things that I didn't really enjoy that I wish they would have cut down a little bit. But once you complete an area, you'll be able to summon an apex predator. And that apex predator will look like a more rugged version of previous predators in that area, like an alligator or a ooh barracuda. <laughs> or a marlin, or a white shark, or a killer orca, or a sperm whale. And most of the later apex predators force me to use my dodging and attacking more methodically and more effectively, similar to the later human bosses. Once I finished this game, I felt like I was the strongest creature in the damn ocean. What I also enjoyed was the environments. So when you start off in the beginning bayou area, it's more narrow and more polluted because there's a lot of nearby humans that are just inconsiderate of the environment and the game makes a lot of like discovery channel like commentary to teach you about how humans are damaging the marine life and also it teaches you about marine life which is kind of cool they also make a lot of jokes and easter eggs for example one was related to castaway where he was talking about how soccer balls are a lot nicer than volleyballs which if you watch castaway you'll totally get it so i really like the commentary it was super cool super cute but yeah so you start in these narrow environments and then it kind of branches out as you progress to each area it becomes more 
more and more expansive. Like you'll get to a resort and then a really high-end resort that has like a bigger ocean and also a lot more land and a lot more like entertainment, like stages or rides or things like that. And you're in an ocean that's side by side of a big city with buildings and carousels and tourist attractions and things like that pretty much killing all the humans <laughs> ruining everyone's vacation and the way that they use these environments i thought was pretty clever especially in one of the areas that has a big golf course where you can kind of jump up above from the ocean into the rough or into the grass and then go into like a water hole which would be a water hazard in golf but my favorite part of the environment is that once you get to later areas and the ocean became more expansive i felt the anxiety that i only feel in very few games where you're exploring the underwater levels for example the witcher 3 exploring skellige island or even assassin's creed odyssey where you see that big giant whale i had that moment in this game even though i was a shark and completely competent and not losing breath while underwater i still felt that like underwater anxiety where i'm in this like big expansive ocean and it feels endless and I know where to go, but like I feel safer by the shore for some reason or wherever I see land or coral reefs. And I see this big giant sperm whale in the distance that I know I can't handle at this point because I'm not fully leveled up and I'm still like an adult or an elder and not ready to take on that predator. It was really cool. I kind of love that feeling. It's like a weird thing. It scares the shit out of me, but it also makes me feel good. I don't know. Anyone else? No. But it finally felt good when I was able to fight that sperm whale and it turned out to be kind of a pushover But I still like the anxiety and the suspense building up to that fight Overall this game is so contained and so fun that it can make someone who's not typically a completionist or someone who doesn't typically go for Platinums or 100% achievements it can really motivate them to actually have that experience. It's so fun to simply swim around and bite everything and not really have to put too much strategy or thought into it and just complete objectives. I do think it would have been a more contained and well-rounded experience if they would have cut out some of the objectives like kill 10 catfish or kill 10 alligators or whatever. I think killing like one of each marine life and the apex predators or maybe even add some apex predators like an octopus or a jellyfish or some other marine predator and then keeping in killing like a batch of humans to then summon the human boss and that's it not making me keep killing humans over and over again to summon this boss like let it be a little easier to summon the bosses without me having to kill a thousand humans despite the redundancy it only overstayed its welcome a little bit i definitely play games that it had way too much content way too much redundant content a lot of ubisoft games fall into this camp and this one had so little depth to it that the redundancy despite being short-lived still felt a little stale quicker than I wanted it to like I think by the time I was a teenager I was like okay I get what this game's going for but then when I started fighting more apex predators and knowing that they were human bosses that's what kind of kept me going but it did feel a little bit redundant quicker than most games that have this kind of gameplay loop but i ended the game on a good note it was super satisfying to feel like the most deadly marine predator of that ocean <laughs> and my bull shark looked damn cool it looks so cool i mean the graphics in this game are really good i mean it's very cartoony but it was still really cool to look at i wish it kind of had a photo mode actually that's what i would recommend to a photo mode because there were certain times where my bull shark would jump up above the water and you'd see like a ferris wheel in the background and my shark's like 10 feet above the water and it has a human in its mouth just chomping away i feel like that would have made for a really cool screenshot and even at nighttime because there's a night and day cycle you'll see like all the buildings in the background lit up with like neon colors and it just looked really cool i wish i had a photo mode to have those kind of action moments captured and i also really like photo mode that's a testament to to how good the game looks i just want to be also clear before i close out that i played this on my playstation 5 that maybe also contributed to how good it looked and how good it played it played very smoothly i had two crashes but i can't tell if that was a playstation 5 issue or an issue with the game but that was it it wasn't persistent at all so yeah if you're looking for some good mindless fun with really cool environments and boss fights then definitely play man eater i think you'll like it and definitely if you're a trophy hunter this is a really good easy smooth quick platinum you can finish it in one or two sittings yeah ready you like it too you like man eater you want to be the the strongest shark in the world 
Yeah, you're the biggest predator of my life. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you played Maneater, I want to hear your opinions. You can stop rubbing on my mic now. <laughs> Take care, guys.